Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all of my information. I do all the lead code and hacker rank problem solutions and I just explain these algorithms here, right? So this problem is 1249 minimum remove to make valid parentheses. Okay. Uh, this is very similar to, you know, other parentheses problems that we've done before. Maybe like balance parentheses or something like that. You know, balancing parentheses. Uh, maybe you check those out if you haven't seen them. Given a string of open, closing parentheses, so we have opening and closing parentheses in lowercase English letters in this string, my, our task is to remove the minimum number of parentheses, open or closing, in any positions of the string so that the resulting parentheses string is valid and return any valid string. Uh, basically, what we're given is a string. It looks much like this. We got letters, lowercase English letters, and opening and closing parentheses, and we just want to balance these out, right? There's going to be extra parentheses. Like if we look at the situation, we have an opening, an opening, a closing, a closing. So those are balanced, right? It looks like balanced parentheses, nested parentheses, but we have this extra one at the end. It has to be an even number, right? First of all, first rule in balancing parentheses. So we're going to want to remove this and return it, you know, without that extra one, right? We want to balance it in the minimum number of removals possible. And we're going to return the uh, balanced version of it, right? Uh, another rule that we uh, should clarify before we get into this a little bit more is you can't have closing parentheses before opening parentheses, like in this little case here, right? That is just not acceptable. We'll have to remove both of the parentheses in that case. That can't be balanced, right? So as long as we keep track of those situations, I think we're going to be fine. We can look at an example here. This closing one, it's got to go right we have these balanced ones here closing before opening it's got to go uh, we got two closing and two opening right after all of them got to go uh so yeah all right we got it so i'm just going to code this out and i'll explain it while i do it and I'll, I'll do an overview at the end as well so basically we're gonna have a string builder right this this in java string builders are just things we use to build strings strings are a little bit more complicated than in other languages and in java um, we're going to do a, we're going to keep track, we're going to have a variable to keep track of the number of opening parentheses we see as we traverse this string. So we're going to loop through the string, right? Uh, we're going to go for char c in s.2 char array, right? And uh, this is just looping character by character. C is the character of, e, of the string as we loop through. L, E, E, you know, and we could check the character. I'm turning it into a char array and I know that's extra space, but uh, I don't, I, it makes it easier to explain, right? So if C, the current character we're looping through, is equal to an opening parenthesis, well, we're keeping track of the opening parentheses here. So we are going to increment open as our variable to keep track. Else if, we want to check if it's a closing parenthesis, right? So if it is a closing parenthesis, we are going to decrement because that means we're when we find a balance, if we find an open and then a close afterwards, we want to keep balance here. Open is going to keep balance, right? And as we go, we're going to be appending each character to our string builder. Basically, in this loop up here, we want to go through this string and remove characters that we don't want in the string and add them to our string builder. We want to add characters that we want in our string builder, right? Um, now... How do we exclude characters we don't want? Well, in this upper loop, we're going to exclude closing parentheses that come before the opening parentheses. And to do that, we're gonna say, if open is equal to zero, meaning we haven't seen any opening parentheses yet, but we see a closing one. So this means we've seen a closing one before an opening because opening hasn't been incremented because we haven't seen it. Then what's gonna happen is we're going to just continue through the loop and not append that closing brace onto our string builder so we're gonna this loop essentially in this example right in this leak code example we're gonna be like l e e this is all getting put onto the string builder right we see an opening brace open is now one we increment open we see t goes on another opening brace opens two c is on closing brace okay it goes on because that's a bat that's fine because open is greater than zero and we decrement open it goes to one o is on another closing brace open goes to zero 
we see DE, and then we see that closing brace at the end. Open is zero though, so we don't even put that closing brace on. So the, the string that's gonna go into the string builder is this when we go down into our second loop. And you could see that's removing, you know, an ex extra closing brace or just closing braces that come before opening braces in general, you see? Now, what if we have excess opening braces? What if we come out of this loop and open is greater than zero, meaning it is not balanced? Open, if open is zero, that means everything's balanced. So we have to handle the excess opening braces. So we're gonna make a new string builder for our final result, right? And we're just gonna call this result. So we're gonna say result is equal to new string builder, right? Um, and we're gonna be looping and we're gonna loop backwards. So we're gonna do sb.length minus one, i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. This is just a basic backwards loop through the string. So now we have this, and why would we wanna loop backwards through a string now? Um, we're gonna loop backwards because if open is greater than zero, we wanna remove those extra opening braces. But if we, move, if we went forward and it looked like this, um, no, 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 wait. If it looked like this and we went forward, we would end up deleting this first character and it would, sorry, we would, sorry. It, we would end up deleting this, so, okay, sorry, let me zoom in. Oh no, don't ruin this. <laughs> if, if we were to, if we were, if open is greater than zero, right? We have extra opening braces. If we were to loop forward, these are balanced. We wanna keep these. We wanna remove this last opening brace. So we would wanna delete this first character. We wouldn't wanna delete this first character. So we loop backwards so that we're not deleting balanced ones. We're deleting this excess ones afterwards, right? Cause it's only gonna be not balanced if we see these excess opening braces at the end, right? That's the situation that we're handling here. So we go backwards. We're doing the same thing. We're gonna append. We're just gonna do sb.append. Um, sorry, sp.append, uh, we're, we're actually doing result.append because we're returning results. So sp, result.append sp.char at um, i in this case. And the only condition we want to do now is, okay, if, um, if sp.char, if we see an opening brace, so if we see an opening brace, if sp.char at i, is equal to an opening brace because we're handling excess opening braces and open it after we decrement it is greater than zero then that means we have excess ones we want to continue because we don't want to add those onto the string now is this completely done well no we had this then if we add excess opening braces we remove them but now it's backwards because we looped backwards and put these onto the result going backwards which we had to so what we're just gonna have to do, which is really simple at the end, is just return result.reverse.toString. And that should be the whole problem. We reverse it because we put things on going backwards. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about this. I think that was pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the solution, I think uh, I explained that decently. So there, there you go. This is a linear time solution. Um, so it's a pretty good solution. I like this one. It's not too difficult to understand. There's other solutions that you could check out where you use a stack as well. Uh, but I like this solution that I went over a little bit better. So maybe check out the stack one too. There's two great solutions. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Please like and subscribe because it helps the channel grow. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.